Okay. Uh, uh, hello, everybody, once more. It is my pleasure to begin our next uh, meeting of our session. And uh, our first uh, speaker now is Professor Vladislav Kravchenko from Mexico. Uh, by his talk, his report is uh, title of his report is the quaternionic representation of Maxwell's system for inhomogeneous media and some applications. Thank you very much, Yuri, and thank <coughs> all of you for being here. So uh, let me start with a children's riddle first. So the riddle is about this equation. What is this equation? Here, D is uh, what is called uh, frequently as moisel teodorescu operator or Dirac operator, but uh, in fact, it's the most authentic Hamiltonian because it was introduced by Hamilton himself. And uh, E1, E2, E3 are basic quaternionic units here. So D is the moisel teodorescu operator. I is the complex imaginary unit. This is the derivative with respect to time. V here is purely vectorial by quaternion valued function. And on the right hand side, we have a by quaternion valued function called J. So the riddle is, what is this equation? And the answer is known for more than 100 years already. The answer is that this is precisely the Maxwell system for a vacuum. So if this V is this combination of the vectors E and H, E and H are real valued, purely vectorial, quaternions, and J is this uh, charge density, and here J is the current. Uh, so in this case, this equation is precisely the Maxwell system for a vacuum. So uh, I think the first person who noticed this fact was Cornelius Langschus in 1919, so 101 years ago. In his PhD uh, thesis, uh, defended in Budapest, and now it is available at Archifork. Okay, so this fact was rediscovered by many researchers. For example, uh, the paper by Imaeda uh, became quite well known uh, of 1976, where practically it was about this, uh, the same fact. And uh, I, I will not give a list of all persons who rediscovered this, uh, this biquaternionic form of Maxwell system for a vacuum, uh, but uh, I refer to this paper by Sponner and Hurney, where uh, they give some comments about this uh, uh, about these uh, papers where uh, the same fact appears again. So, uh, in fact, nothing changes essentially for an arbitrary homogeneous medium. So, uh, epsilon and mu are the permittivity and permeability, and if they are constant then in fact uh, we obtain the same equation. So we can write it for example this way where explicitly uh, this constant C appears which is the wave propagation velocity in the medium. So this is the same in fact uh, by quaternionic equation and uh, it uh, uh, serves for any homogeneous medium. Now, uh, in fact, this, um, uh, this form of writing the 
Maxwell system uh, was quite fruitful, uh, in fact, because uh, uh, especially for time harmonic fields, for time harmonic uh, electromagnetic fields, which are basically uh, the fields which depend harmonically, so in this way, on time, like exponentials, where omega is the frequency. So, for example, in our book with Michael Shapiro, we, we have quite uh, a lot about this, uh, uh, this uh, model and uh, different uh, boundary value problems related to time harmonic uh, Maxwell's uh, system. Also in my uh, book, Applied Quaternionic Analysis. Uh, and um, there are uh, quite a lot of papers dedicated to this case. So homogeneous medium and time harmonic uh, electromagnetic field. For example, uh, papers by Klaus Gürlebeck, Wolfgang Sprosik, Marius Mitria, Van Hild Bernstein, Søren Kraus, Harry, uh, Abreu Blaya and Bori Reyes. So there, there are uh, other persons, uh, sorry if I, if I forgot to mention somebody. Uh, I would like here to uh, to mention uh, our paper with Milnitsky and Rabinovich, where um, uh, based on this uh, on this biquaternionic reformulation uh, of the Maxwell system for homogeneous media, uh, a very nice numerical method was proposed for solving electromagnetic scattering problems. So in fact, it it worked very, very well. Unfortunately, we didn't continue our research in this direction, our work. So uh, there, there are some numerical examples here, which uh, uh, in fact show that uh, probably is the best method for, uh, for electromagnetic scattering problems in this setting. And uh, I would like to mention here uh, this um, uh, review paper on biquaternions for analytic and numerical solution of equations of electromagnetic theory, which was published in China, and uh, which uh, uh, contains also some information about chiral media and biquaternionic reformulation of Maxwell system for chiral media uh, and so on. But um, uh, the second question is uh, the following and uh, what happens? if the medium is uh, non-homogeneous. So now epsilon and mu are functions of uh, uh, coordinates, x1, x2, and x3. And uh, uh, so this is the, the Maxwell system in this case. And the question is if uh, it admit, uh, admits a representation in the form of a single by quaternionic equation. Um, and in fact, it, uh, it took quite a lot of time to, to obtain the following result, but uh, the answer is yes, and uh, it can be found in this book uh, of mine on applied quaternionic analysis. And the answer is the following. So this is precisely the Maxwell system in the biquaternionic form for any uh, inhomogeneous medium. So uh, here uh, it's important that uh, the multiplication of course is on the right hand side by uh, in this case A looks like, like this. So this is the Moisel-Todoresco operator applied to the square root of the velocity of the same uh, C, which appears here, of the velocity of propagation of electromagnetic waves in the medium, uh, divided by the same square root. Um, B is uh, more or less something similar, but uh, uh, where the Z is the intrinsic impedance of the medium. So this is uh, this guy. Uh, here, this uh, V bar, uh, means uh, the uh, complex conjugation. Uh, and J has such a form where, uh, uh, again, uh, the charge density appears and the current 
in the medium, but multiplied by these functions, epsilon and mu. So in fact, uh, this is a very nice biquaternionic equation where the whole Maxwell system for inhomogeneous media um, is, uh, and um, uh, what it looks like. So the first uh, idea is that it's pretty much uh, uh, resembles the so-called Vecqua equation uh, from the theory of generalized analytic functions uh, in 2D. So the Vecqua equation has such a form, looks like the Maxwell equation in, in biquaternionic terms. And the theory of, of uh, generalized analytic, or uh, in another way, they are called pseudo-analytic functions, is quite well developed since uh, 1950s, by mainly by Lipman Peirce and Ilya Vekwa. Uh, also, there are several books on, on this subject, Wendland, Gliev, uh, Klementov, which is in Russian, a nice book. And uh, I would like to mention my uh, book on this subject as well, uh, because uh, apart from studying uh, the Vecqua equation only in two dimensions, here uh, there are some applications to Vecqua type equations in quaternions and biquaternions. So, um, but today I would like to, to present to you only one application. Uh, of this biquaternionic uh, representation of the Maxwell system for inhomogeneous media. So this application uh, concerns the following model. We have some modulated electromagnetic wave inciding on the uh, inhomogeneous medium where the inhomogeneity depends uh, uh, just on one variable. So it, it's a layer medium. medium. Uh, uh, this uh, wave comes normally uh, incident, but uh, most importantly that this is a modulated electromagnetic wave. So th this is precisely what, uh, what should be studied. In fact, not uh, just time harmonic, which means that we have just one frequency and uh, nothing of modulation. But here, uh, uh, in fact, uh, many frequencies can participate, as we will see. And uh, so it's an arbitrary modulated time uh, dependent electromagnetic wave, which comes, uh, which uh, incites on the inhomogeneous medium. So uh, this problem, of course, is classic. Uh, for example, uh, it can be found in the book by Ostrovsky, Potapov Modulated Waves, Theory and Applications. And in a closed form, the only thing which is very well known is the so-called single wave approximation. So I, I will uh, uh, say to you what, what does it mean a little bit later. But of course, it, it can uh, have nothing to do with the reality. Uh, in fact, this single wave approximation and uh, uh, besides that, there are only numeric, purely numerical methods which uh, you should discretize uh, the problem and uh, try to solve it numerically. So we studied this problem in two papers with my Mexican co colleagues, uh, Kira Khmelnitska and Sergei Torba. Uh, first, in this paper of uh, uh, 16, uh, I, I would say that uh, a partial uh, a partial solution was given and finally uh, very recently we obtained a, a complete solution of, of of this of this problem which uh, uh, besides to be an analytic form of a solution uh, lends itself uh, to numerical uh, calculation so i will show you some numerical illustrations as well so um, uh, we are studying the model where this epsilon depends just on x, on one variable. Mu can be constant, can be a function, doesn't matter, but for, for, for simplicity, 
it is a constant, so the medium is non-magnetic. And in this case, it, uh, the problem can be reduced to the situation when this V, which was the combination of E and H uh, of the electric and magnetic uh, fields, uh, depends uh, just on X and on T. So it doesn't depend on Y and Z. And after some, well, simple, more or less manipulations, uh, one can find that the biquaternionic Maxwell equation, which I showed you before, uh, can be reduced to this bicomplex vacua type equation, where this dz uh, bar is not elliptic, but it's hyperbolic. Uh, uh, it looks like this. But here, J is um, the hyperbolic imaginary unit. So J squared is one. And it commutes with the complex imaginary unit. So W is a bicomplex valued uh, function here. Uh, this uh, bar means the conjugation with respect to J, to this hyperbolic unit. And the coefficient have, has such a special form where this function f, I will show you, it is related with epsilon and mu, of course. And uh, uh, now uh, here, instead of x, there appears another uh, independent variable, uh, which, uh, uh, which appears after a change of the variable, which looks like this. And uh, f then, has such a form. So f of xi uh, is related to this epsilon and mu uh, in this way, where tilde here and in what follows means just that the function is written in terms of the new variable xi, uh, xi in, instead of x. Okay, so c tilde means that it, uh, this is the same c, but written uh, in terms of psi. So um, this w, which appears uh, here in this vacua type equation, uh, is related with the electric and magnetic fields in this way. And now what we can do for this problem. So the whole problem of the wave propagation in, in this case in, uh, through the inhomogeneous medium reduces to this more or less simple Cauchy problem for the bicomplex vacua type equation. So this is the vacua type equation, which I described uh, uh, above. And uh, this is the initial condition. The initial uh, here means that uh, corresponds to x equal to zero or psi equal to zero. So, and uh, here, this is precisely our incident wave. And how we solve this problem? We solve it uh, using two ideas, which I will try to, to explain here. So the first idea is the following, that this W, in fact, is nothing but a certain transmutation, or sometimes it is called transformation operator, applied to some W small, where W small is a solution of an elementary hyperbolic uh, Cauchy-Riemann equation, which can be solved completely explicitly with uh, an initial condition, which in fact coincides with this W naught. This is the first idea. So uh, there is, there exists a certain, uh, a very good transmutation operator, which relates these two problems. The uh, Cauchy problem for the uh, Cauchy-Riemann uh, hyperbolic equation and Cauchy problem for the vacua type equation. And the second idea is that this operator T, in fact, can be constructed analytically. So uh, I will uh, not able to describe all, all the steps uh, to give you all the details, but uh, more or less, um, uh, first of all, the theory of transmutation operators is also quite well known and there are a lot of publications. I, 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 here I just mentioned some 
known books on this subject by Carroll, by Levitan, uh, Bigger Gilbert, uh, Marchenko, a very recent book uh, by Sitnik and Shishkina on this subject, and my own uh, little book which just appeared uh, on direct and inverse sturm Lewis problems, where uh, precisely this uh, results about transmutation operators appear. So uh, this analytic construction of the transmutation operator, which I use here, is from this paper uh, with my uh, joint paper with my colleagues, uh, Luis Navarro and uh, Sergei Torba of 2017. So the result uh, of application of these techniques more or less is the following. The general solution, W, of this vector type equation. So uh, here I, I should mention that uh, the medium is arbitrary. So epsilon is an arbitrary function. And uh, the general solution uh, has such form. So here W is a general solution of this elementary Cauchy-Riemann uh, equation, uh, but hyperbolic Cauchy-Riemann equation. Uh, Pn here stands for uh, the Legendre polynomial of order n. R and I uh, they um, uh, denote the following operations, which are more or less real part and imaginary parts of a bicomplex function. But uh, of course, these real and imaginary parts will be uh, complex in this case. Uh, and uh, finally probably most important, uh, we have here certain coefficients, a n and b n. So I, I will not show you the exact definition of these coefficients, but uh, they uh, are constructed uh, in, in a certain um, very simple way uh, as a recurrent integration procedure. So on each step you multiply by something, integrate, might multiply by something, integrate. Uh, something of course known, and you obtain the uh, this coefficient. So uh, in practice, on on a computer, you can uh, easily uh, compute. Uh, for example, if one needs 100 of such coefficients or even more, but in fact uh, they are not needed in, in such uh, large numbers. So this is the general solution of this equation. It has such a form. And uh, uh, using the fact that, uh, that um, this elementary Cauchy Riemann, uh, hyperbolic Cauchy Riemann equation can be solved completely explicitly. So, using this, we obtain finally the uh, unique solution of the Cauchy problem for the hyperbolic Vecco equation shown above. So, the, uh, it has such a form where these p plus minus are uh, by complex idempotents, uh, which can be introduced in this way. And uh, w plus w minus here, this notation means that you take the real part plus or minus the imaginary part of, of the by complex number w. Okay, so this is the solution. This is the solution of the Cauchy problem for the uh, Vecco equation. So how it works? Let us suppose, for example, that uh, the incident wave uh, has such a form, is a partial sum of some Fourier series. This is the most important uh, case, in fact, in practice. Even uh, the case when uh, this M is just zero, so you obtain uh, just one, uh, plane wave incident on the inhomogeneous medium is already of, of, of interest because, uh, okay, uh, explicitly uh, this, this model uh, cannot be solved, even in this case. So uh, let us suppose that we have such initial data. So this is our incident wave with some coefficients uh, alpha m and B, beta m. And um, W uh, not, which is the initial data for the 
uh, Cauchy problem for the VECO equation, in this case has such a form where the coefficients CM are related with alpha M and beta M in this way. Then the solution of the problem uh, has such form. So you, you see that all these integrals uh, which appeared uh, with the, the Legendre polynomials and um, uh, exponential functions, they give us this uh, spherical, uh, spherical basal functions, Jn, which are very nice functions. In fact, they, they look like this in terms of the usual basal functions. So it's, this solution is completely explicit. And um, in fact, if we come back to the electromagnetic field, the solution looks like this. So it's, uh, um, it's nothing uh, difficult in fact. So this is the, the combination of this uh, of this series, which uh, contain uh, just this uh, coefficient. So uh, what, what should be mentioned here is that independently uh, of uh, the frequency here, uh, uh, these coefficients uh, a n and b n are computed. So uh, they are completely independent on the initial data and uh, on how this uh, these um, frequencies participate. They depend only on the medium. Now, uh, for this solution, a very important fact is uh, can be proved. So if together with the exact solution, we consider its approximation, so we just truncate here these sums, consider the approximated solution, then the following estimates can be uh, proved. So the difference between the uh, the uh, exact uh, field and the, uh, its approximation uh, ad, uh, admits this estimate. Here, most importantly, is that this estimate doesn't depend on the largeness of the frequency. So it, the frequency can be very high or can be very low, it doesn't matter. The accuracy of the method is not affected by the frequency. And uh, so uh, this leads to the following, for example, uh, results in, in, in the case of applying this uh, numerically. So uh, this is just to show you one, one example. Um, here, um, oh, sorry. Here, uh, epsilon has such a form, uh, L, uh, some constant alpha by x plus another constant beta and in the power minus two. And in, in this case, uh, uh, why, why such a case? Because in this case, uh, everything can be done explicitly and, uh, uh, and uh, our numerical results can be uh, compared against the exact results. So this is the uh, graphs of the exact solutions. Uh, here is E. And here is H. Uh, and um, he, uh, what, what is shown here is the absolute error of E and H. So you can see that it's more or less 10 to, uh, uh, to minus 14. And the error is uniform, which, uh, which is due to that estimate, which I, I've just shown you uh, before. And for, for this uh, approximation, uh, only 13, uh, n equal to 13 was uh, sufficient. So it, it converges uh, very, very, very fast and uh, can be um, uh, programmed without uh, any effort, in fact, on the computer. So this is only one application which I, I, I prepared for this talk. Uh, in fact, my talk uh, was thought to be an, an invitation that, uh, to study more uh, this biquaternionic uh, form for uh, of the Maxwell uh, system for inhomogeneous media. I repeat that this is exactly the Maxwell system just written in this way. So it's completely equivalent, nothing, no, no tricks here. It's completely equivalent to uh, the Maxwell uh, system for any inhomogeneous medium. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and patience. Thank you. Thank you, Vladislav, for the presentation. We have half a mi minute 
for <laughs> some questions. Okay, if there are. Any questions, comments, remarks? No question. Thanks again, our speaker.